Aleister Crowley, more so than any man, not just on the New Age movement, but more so than any man that anybody can come up with, we can prove that Aleister Crowley has been more influential on Western culture, popular culture, than any other human being. Now that's quite incredible because he's also the most highly regarded Satanist. And a Satanist he was. Some uh, New Agers and some Satanists want to try to distance himself, distance Crowley from being a real Satanist. However, he makes it really clear. Uh, we have quote after quote after quote who he was serving and how he was serving his god Satan. In fact, he did rituals that make it quite clear. He would grab a frog in one of his rituals and he would uh, say, you know, hail unto the power of Satan. I have you, Jesus of Nazareth, to the frog. And then he would crucify this frog and speaking in, the, in the terms as though he was Satan and treating this frog as though he was Jesus. This was just one of his many satanic rituals. He was a very, very evil man. He was kicked out of France and called the evilest man in the world or the wickedest man on earth by uh, the popular newspapers of his day. He talked about sacrificing several children to Satan. Uh, he, he talked about bringing in the New World Order under the coming Antichrist. So uh, it's very pertinent to understand that many of these musicians that lined up after him were all about anarchy and rebellion against established uh, government and with the idea of bringing in a new world government, uh, some kind of social, socialized world government and so forth. And Crowley, his, he had, uh, his ideas were more like Nietzsche though and more like Hitler in regard to politics and ultimately that's where all this is leading. I mean it's all about peace and love on the outside. But when it all comes down there's going to be a brutal leader that will emerge who Crowley um, was forthright enough to talk about in his in his books and talk about this bloodbath that would come when Christians would be put to death in the establishment of the New World Order. But it's just amazing. Daryl Hall, Sting, you know, Hall and Oates and, 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 and Sting and uh, we can mention different grunge groups and uh, all, all these different artists you would not believe one after another that was influenced by Crowley. I mean, I don't, can't think of any other occultist who's been more influential on rock musicians than Aleister Crowley, no one close. Now what about uh, Crowley's influence over uh, people you wouldn't expect, somebody like uh, Adolf Hitler? Well, uh, Crowley apparently influenced people from Adolf Hitler to Timothy Leary to Robert Anton Wilson, to Harry Hay, to L. Ron Hubbard. And all these names are significant. With regard to Adolf Hitler, uh, it's interesting uh, that two of the societies that influenced Hitler in his early days that became, uh, many people came out of these two societies, the Tool Society and the Verrill Society, to become Hitler's henchmen in the Nazi movement, and basically the Nazi movement used these two societies, were societies that were influenced by Aleister Crowley and by Madame Blavatsky. In fact, uh, it's said that Hitler had written, uh, read, or Crowley claims that Hitler basically sought to put into effect his, uh, his plan of a new eon and so forth in the Superman. I mean, before Hitler was talking about the Superman, uh, uh, in the whole Nietzsche idea, Crowley was developing that under occult terms, which is what the whole Nazi thing was. It wasn't simply an atheistic uh, Nietzschean type of idea. It was more of a occultic idea with the Hitler Superman. I mean, when uh, after they came, went into Germany and, and Germans had lost the war, I mean, they found, you know, several Buddhist, hundreds and hundreds of Buddhists who had been imported from India. Uh, the swastika itself is an is a Eastern uh, symbol. Uh, Crowley's New Age would be uh, a uniting of Eastern mysticism and Western mysticism and a synthesis of the two, along with uh, occultic drug use for supernatural powers, the philosophy of do what thou wilt, which in the 1960s became do your own thing. In fact, if you think of it this way, Crowley's maxim was do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, totally against Christ, who said, not my will, but thine be done to the Father, and told us to pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Crowley was called the beast even from a young age when he was just a teenager by his mom. His mother was a Plymouth Brethren evangelist. His, his father was a Plymouth Brethren evangelist who he rebelled against. His mom called him the beast from that day on. I mean, he signed all of his letters, the beast 666. I mean, it was pretty clear where he was coming from. But his whole concept was, to, he read the book of Revelation, and he read about the coming new world order under Antichrist. And he said what attracted him was not the images of the Lamb, 
not the images uh, that are put forth of the things of the kingdom of God, but he was attracted to the beast and to the dragon and to the whore of Babylon. And he wanted to be, he said, he wanted to get in touch with Satan personally and become his right-hand man. What just so happens that he was used more than anybody in, in Western culture to influence popular Western culture toward uh, this, this liberal kind of do what thou wilt attitude. Whereby in the 1960s, the maxim was not do what thou wilt, but do your own thing, the same thing, or if it feels good, do it. Now this is significant because in the 1940s, Crowley wrote that he believed his new eon, his movement would take off in the United States like no place else. And Lester Crowley said what he needed to do was to get a hold of the youth. He used to go to Oxford and other colleges to recruit youth into his movement. He wanted there to be a youth movement that would usher in the new age of Crowley or Crowleyanity as some people would call them.